exploring how to use CSE for container image distribution. Um, first, my name is Alban. I live in Berlin. I'm at Team Folk. And we are basically a, a team of developers. We like to work on container things, both on Kubernetes and low-level Linux uh, containers. Um, today, I will talk about um, the existing uh, distribution mechanism for uh, container images. I will mention a couple of them. And uh, I will explain the problem I'm trying to resolve to uh, optimize the network traffic to try to uh, send less data over the network to the images. And uh, mention uh, two different ideas. And uh, I will focus on CAC. And then I will explain my experiments and show some uh, numbers and some graphs about uh, what I've got. So uh, first, uh, I'm a rocket uh, developer. Um, so uh, that's what I know more. Um, uh, on rocket, uh, there is two mechanisms supported to download container images. There is the first the uh, uh, Docker way, connecting to a Docker registry and getting the Docker image from that. Yeah, it uses uh, the Docker distribution model. And it supports as well on the ACI discovery protocol. Um, and that's uh, something uh, which is supported uh, well in Rocket. Uh, I don't mention OCI here because OCI is mostly the OCI bundle. Uh, that's the image format on this. That's not really about the distribution. So um, the way we get image with uh, from the Docker hub, from the Docker registry, uh, is this way. Um, here I have um, Kubernetes node. Uh, with Rocket instead of it, and um, when I get an image, uh, a Docker image, then Rocket will use the Docker to SEI tool internally to automatically uh, support the Docker distribution model, and it will uh, download from the Docker registry all the layers uh, from the Docker image. Um, in this model, you can configure uh, your Kubernetes cluster to either use the registry, the Docker Hub, or your own registry if you want to. Um, the SCI discovery protocol is uh, different. When you specify an uh, image, for example, in this case, uh, corest.com slash etc, um, Rocket will first uh, go to the web page uh, corest.com slash etc, and uh, look at the HTML page, and inside there should be uh, meta tags to explain how to get the image. So it's more decentralized, it relies on DNS to uh, get the image. Um, in this example, it's like to go to github.com slash releases, etc. So it will download uh, an SCI file, which is actually a table. And that table contains a manifest on the rootfs that are all the directories or files in the container. Um, optionally, your image can refer to uh, other image if it has parent image, and uh, it will repeat the process and so on. So, on both those models, uh, there is uh, two issues I can see with the uh, wasting network bandwidth. Um, in this one, I have uh, several Kubernetes clusters, and all of them are configured to take images from uh, the Docker Hub. So, we see it's a quite centralized uh, place. So the first issue is if you uh, update um, your Kubernetes uh, application, it will take the next version, and uh, all, your, um, all your nodes in your Kubernetes cluster will, uh, at similar time, download from the same place um, the next version of the container image. So that can put a lot of pressure on the centralized uh, registry. The other issue is, um, when you upgrade your application from one version to another, uh, the two different uh, versions of the same container might not have so much uh, differences. Um, maybe there is some change in the binary, but most of the data file will be the same. Uh, so it seems quite wasteful to uh, download the full image um, in this case. So um, for these two problems, one problem is the centralized space on the uh, other problem, the small differences between um, two versions. Um, um, there are, I will show two different strategies that uh, people have thought about. The, the first one is uh, to use BitTorrent. So um, you, there is an example of uh, people doing that with uh, KCTL, key.io or uh, Quay.io, um, which is uh, 
support. Uh, it's a registry for uh, Docker image or SCI as well. And uh, you can check this core as blog post where uh, there is a way to use BitTorrent for that, so that uh, less pressure on the, on the registry. Um, that was implemented in PCTL. And in Rocket, there was some discussion about using BitTorrent as well, but uh, nothing was merged or finished. Um, the other uh, way is uh, using CSync, which is the, the most uh, what I will focus on for this talk. So the motivation for using CSync is only don't sh download the change between two versions. So here I have uh, two versions of one image. Um, and in the mid image, the difference between image one and uh, version one and version two is only uh, one small piece of uh, change. So it goes from orange to green on the graph. In this case, I would like to only download uh, that small portion and not re-download everything when I upgrade uh, the image. Um, so it's cut into chunks. Um, but there is a problem to if we do it naively without uh, thinking too much. Uh, if the image uh, gets some bytes removed or added, uh, we can see if the chunk size was fixed. It will not really work because the hash of the next chunk will be completely changed. So uh, to fix this problem, CSync implements something which is a, a variable size for chunks. And the size of each chunk uh, can vary uh, depending on the content. So it uses a cryptographic hash to uh, determine a probability to, um, to know whether to get more data in the chunk or stop. Uh, um, in this way, there is, is, there is a more likelihood to uh, uh, to not affect the next change. So here, I, uh, in the orange check, I remove some bytes, but still, uh, CSIG managed to uh, have the same chunk for the red and uh, pink, or I'm not sure the color button. Um, so it can manage to uh, only with the node a small part. So how does, uh, what's the full process for using CAC? Um, first, when you have the container image and you want to use CAC, uh, you need to uh, serialize the data. You can do that on the, either on the table or the, uh, um, directories and files. When you have uh, all your container image serialized, you split into a chunk of uh, variable size. And then uh, CAC will hash uh, each and they will be put in a addressable storage. Um, and then each chunk will be compressed. So they can be um, downloaded individually. Um, when the container runtime will have to download the container image, it will use an index file to know which uh, chunk to download. And uh, it will do basically the same process but in reverse. So uh, what I did was a proof of concept to uh, try that in Rocket. So uh, what I want to do is uh, when we do Rocket fetch uh, the version one of an image, it will uh, initially have to download everything. But when I download the version two, only download the difference uh, because I will cache the chunks in the local <coughs> chunk store. And to integrate that in the way it, um, ACI uh, discovery protocol works. Um, I just recognize in the meta tag in HTML if I have an image with a suffix uh, CA ID, which is the index file for uh, CAC, then uh, Rocket will know that uh, it has to use CAC to download the chunks, and it will use the default uh, directory, which is default.ca uh, store. Um, there is a branch for that, so, so that's just a proof of concept. At the moment, it, uh, it's quite basic just to try. Um, I have a list of to do that I would like to try if I have time, or maybe some of you are interested to try it out. Um, there is now a um, library for CAC in Go. Um, so, since okay, Docker and a lot of different software are written in Go, that could be more practical than uh, using directly CAC. Um, there is no uh, garbage collection for the uh, chunks yet, so uh, if we use it a long time, that will 
free control on, uh, that's not really practical yet. So if we need some improvement in uh, CX for that. Another idea is to um, use fuse in um, in CSC, there is a fuse driver to be able to uh, mount the, um, the container image immediately and download on the fly the chunks which are needed. <coughs> so um, that was a bit of the theory, but uh, in practice, does it actually work? Um, to know whether it works or not, if I can save memory with that uh, ID, I uh, run some experiment and I have uh, some script to. Um, to test on the different uh, images to see if it works. Um, the first image I tried was uh, the registry image uh, available on the Docker Hub. Um, I downloaded uh, a lot of different versions from uh, quite old 061 to 071. And in the blue line, I noted the size of the uh, Docker image compressed the size I would have to download if I were not to use uh, CSync. And I can compare that to uh, what's happened if I use uh, CSync to download uh, all of the version uh, when I fell down. So the first download, I see uh, using CSync doesn't save anything. It's actually a, a little bit worse uh, because I don't have anything in the cache yet. But actually, uh, after the third version, I see um, I saved quite a lot of uh, network bandwidth, I don't have to develop so much, um, presumably because uh, the content didn't change that much, so I don't have to develop that much. Sometimes I see that uh, actually I actually have to develop everything, uh, probably because the version, it's a major version, or a lot of things change, so there is not much to win. Um, I tried with other um, images, with Ubuntu, uh, tried different uh, snapshots of Ubuntu, and I see that in this image as well, um, after the first uh, version, I can set some uh, network uh, scope uh, from WaveWorx as well. Uh, looks not too bad. Um, some other software uh, in PHP. Uh, but this one, I didn't get what I expected. Here I see that uh, when I use the CSync method, actually it's, it seems worse most of the time. So I had a look at the image of Prometheus to try to understand what's happening there. And I see the image is based on BusyBox. BusyBox is quite small, so it's not the cause there. Um, but mainly the Prometheus image is just a big or two big binaries of 60 megabytes, something like that. And between each version of TC, um, there is some, uh, some lines of code change between the versions. Not that much, but still, when well, opening it, uh, completely changed the binary, so uh, it doesn't help very much here. Um, in say sync upstream, there is uh, some people trying to uh, make it better for this kind of situation by recognizing uh, the health format of binary files to uh, recognize where to stop the chain. Um, so that's about it. Um, so with this, I can save a network bandwidth for a lot of images, but not a lot of them. Uh, but to properly integrate that, uh, it will require a lot of more work. What I did was uh, just a proof of concept. Is there any question? Why is it worse at the first download? Um, I have a guess, I'm not sure if it's really that. But um, when not using SaySync, uh, I download a compressed image. Uh, when using SaySync, I download a compressed chunk, but each chunk is compressed individually. So probably the compression algorithm is not that good when uh, I only compress small chunks individually. That's my guess, but I didn't check if it is really the case. Can you explain again how you dealt with the fact that there might be bytes missing in the middle? Because as far as I understand, the chunk size is fixed, right? Uh, no, it's not fixed. Okay, but I mean, it's it's not fixed based on the image, or it's not based not not fixed for like 
So what you're saying is, so, so I'm trying to understand how do you detect that a chunk is going to be smaller this time. Uh, so it's, a, uh, it's based in the, uh, only on the content of the data. So uh, what we actually do, we decide how much the size is going to be, uh, and, and it's uh, not exact size. So it's around 64 kilobyte to 100 something in this range. And every time we read a byte, we have a cyclic uh, hash polynomial, and uh, that gives us a probability that it's So you use a rolling hash, essentially. Yes. Okay, because I thought you were using a crypto hash, and I was trying to think, like, adding a byte to try and find the window at which size it seemed expensive. Right. Okay. So you're using both a crypto hash and a rolling hash. Uh, yes, the rolling hash is to decide when to stop. But the, when we put the chunk, in the content at a separate store using a crypto hash. Hi, uh, I'm also curious how well this works with, uh, for example, BFS with compression or, or uh, sorry, not only compression, but also like things like uh, deencrypt and stuff like that. How well do these things work with uh, changing an encryption in, in sort of blocks and so on and so forth? How well does the chunking work with those? Do you mean when the image is encrypted? Uh, so, for example, if you have uh, B3FS with with, uh, with encryption around it, uh, using blocks or something like that, how, how well does it work? How well does the chunking work with things like that? Uh, my guess is it, it will not work. Uh, so, what I tried is to uh, do the serialization on the table, uh, uncompressed table, uh, on not encrypted. But, uh, I, I don't know how it will be possible to do that with a patient. Okay. Uh, what other questions? Yes, no.